Well, this is the time where we go off the script. Oh, oh boy. One of the criticisms of modern WWE programming is that the product is far too scripted. Fans often complain that promos feel unnatural and they seem written by someone who doesn't even seem to know too much about wrestling. Sports entertainment right. slash pro wrestling will not come That's from. sports entertainment. That's not where you come from. You know, pro wrestling is, you know, what my dad did. After all, most of the greatest promos and segments of all time have elements of unscripted material in them, but now it's rare to see a WWE superstar go off script. It's a rather risky move for them to do, as consequences of doing this can really impact their position on the card or even get them released. Now, there have been a number of occasions where a superstar has gone off script, and as a result, it's made the segment even better. But again, these instances are still rare, particularly as the WWE prefers an overly scripted format for all their main shows. But which were the best off script moments? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the best times that WWE superstars went off script. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10, Paul Heyman goes off script and performs a 10 bell salute for Daniel Bryan. One of the top rivals for Roman Reigns since turning heel in 2020 was Daniel Bryan. The two had a number of matches, including a title versus career match, which happened to be the last time that Bryan appeared on WWE programming. On the following week's SmackDown, Reigns, Paul Heyman and Jey Uso came down to the ring and Heyman performed a 10 bell salute for Bryan to represent his departure from WWE. This element of Heyman's promo received a widespread praise from fans and it was even praised by WWE management backstage. Now interestingly enough, this Part of the segment was entirely unscripted and Heyman simply improvised it without any prior warning to anyone, even Reigns or Jey Uso. Now, although a talent doing something of this nature is never encouraged by WWE management, Heyman is one of the most gifted promo guys in the history of WWE, so he's allowed to say virtually whatever he likes. Number 9 Alexa Bliss decides to bring a coffee cup down to the ring. Got my coffee. Have you seen? Oh. Oh, thank you. In 2019, Alexa Bliss debuted A Moment of Bliss. This was an interview segment designed to keep Bliss away from the ring for a brief period where she recovered from a concussion. One of the key parts of the interview segments was that Bliss would have a coffee cup on her table and she would even bring the coffee cup down to the ringside area with her whenever she accompanied Nikki Cross for a match. Now, According to Bliss, the inclusion of the coffee cup into her character was 100% unscripted and she simply believed Vince McMahon would like it. She informed TV Insider that, I knew I was going to be ringside for a particular particular match and looked disinterested, so I just brought my coffee with me. It became a thing after that because I just stood ringside drinking my coffee. Nobody really has stood ringside drinking coffee, so I thought when I went backstage Vince would either like it or fire me. They ended up liking it. Number 8 Ric Flair decides to cut a promo on Randy Orton now, Leading up to Randy Orton's WWE title showdown with Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam in 2020, Orton would bring back the beloved legend killer persona. He would take out a number of legends such as The Big Show, Christian and Shawn Michaels, but another legend that Orton targeted was his former Evolution stablemate Ric Flair. Orton and Flair would have a great segment which was filled with continuity and tremendous promo work. However, it was revealed by Orton that Flair was never supposed to talk in the promo exchange and that Flair completely went off script. Speaking to Inside the Ropes, Orton revealed, Rick knows that and I know that and I'll tell you what, he was never supposed to grab the microphone from me that night. He was just supposed to say a few things under his breath that the handheld camera in the ring may or may not pick up. You were supposed to see our facial expressions and then get an idea he was bringing me back in and eventually we had the hug and I turned on him. But when he grabbed the mic, I was thinking, Ah, come on Rick, you're not supposed to grab the mic. But then he went on to cut the promo and it was very touching. Number 7, Cesaro rips up a beach ball. Now, over the past few years, it's been common practice for fans to hijack the show when there's a match or segment that really doesn't interest them. One of the ways they've done this is by playing with a beach ball in the crowd, and when fans did this at SummerSlam in 2017, this didn't sit well with one particular superstar. Cesaro was in the middle of a match when he was teaming with Sheamus against the duo of Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. In the middle of the match, fans began to play with a beach ball, but this led to Cesaro storming into the crowd, grabbing the ball and tearing it apart. 
The moment was completely unplanned and according to Cesaro, he received praise backstage for doing it as management obviously don't like fans hijacking their show. Number 6. The Rock interacts with a fan dressed as Hulk Hogan and When The Rock appears on WWE television, he is traditionally allowed free reign to discuss whatever he likes. If he is given a script, he will be given bullet points rather than a full-fledged written script. However, when The Rock appeared on Raw in 2016, he did something that really didn't sit well with Vince McMahon. During his appearance, The Rock would interact with fans dressed as wrestlers at ringside. One of these fans was dressed as the controversial Hulk Hogan. Now, Hogan had been fired from the WWE the year prior after he underwent a racist rant in a leaked video. Now, According to SES Scoops, Vince as well as other key members of WWE management threw a huge tantrum backstage as they knew there was nothing they could do about the situation and they simply had to witness it play out first hand. Number 5. Xavier Woods Cites Frustrations in an Off-Script Rant The WWE Draft is usually a hot topic backstage with the WWE roster. It's been reported in the past that superstars aren't aware of where they're being drafted to and they find out the same time as fans watching at home. In 2019's draft, Xavier Woods was frustrated that a number of superstars who appeared on his Up Up Down Down YouTube channel had been moved to Raw. Woods was a Smackdown superstar which therefore made collaborations a lot more difficult moving forward. Whilst appearing on the KO show, Woods began to shoot on the outcome of the draft during his promo and he would state, Honestly on top of that, with all this superstar shake up nonsense, Raw took like 80% of the Up Up Down Down roster and what am I supposed to do? I'm trying to make a successful YouTube channel. They're taking everybody from me and honestly, if I don't see Tyler Breeze on Smackdown by the end of the show, I would lose my mind. Now, According to Dave Meltzer, these comments from Woods weren't in the initial script. Woods had decided to go off script to cite his frustrations on live television. It was unclear if Woods was punished for going off script, however he did manage to deliver the rant in a way which was in line with his WWE television persona, which was an extremely smart thing for a multiple tag team champion to do. Number 4. Ric Flair's Controversial Line a Smackdown before 2016's brand split was a taped show. This meant that they could edit out anything they didn't want airing. However, thanks to a rise in social media as well as everyone in the arena having a camera phone, any instances of mistakes or superstars going off script were usually captured on camera. This was the case during a promo segment between Ric Flair, Charlotte Flair and Natalia who were all guests on the Ambrose Asylum. During the segment, Flair got carried away with a rant about beating Natalia's uncle Bret Hart and during his rant, Flair informed Natalia that she should kill you. Now, This non-PG line from Flair was quite rightly edited out but it wasn't before long that the clip was distributed all over social media so the majority of the fans were fully aware of Flair going drastically off script. Number 3. Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar interact with Jerry Lawler Talking nice. Talking nice. Uh, I, I just said you and Brock Lesnar just made a believer out of me. On the 6th January 2020 edition of Raw, Brock Lesnar declared that he would enter the Royal Rumble match as WWE Champion. Following his major announcement, Lesnar along with Paul Heyman walked over to the Raw commentary team and this is when Lesnar put his hand on Lawler's shoulder and Heyman informed Lawler that he was to say nice things about the WWE Champion. Now, According to Lawler, this part of the segment wasn't planned and he had zero idea that it was going to happen. He would discuss the unscripted moment on his podcast and revealed, so all we can see is nothing. We could just see the cameras and we just assume that they're, you know, they're seeing us and everything. And all of a sudden I feel this hand on my shoulder and I'm like, what the heck? And it's Brock Lesnar. And he's just kind of brushing aside and he's walking past me. And then I look over to my right and there's, there of course is uh, Paul Heyman. And, you know, he said, come on, come on, King. Talk nice about me. Talk nice. <laughs> And I mean, that was just totally off the top of his head and I had no idea they were going to be there. So I don't, I saw a picture on Twitter that somebody put up and you could tell from my facial expression that I had no idea that, that was about to happen. Number 2. Dean Ambrose goes off script during his babyface turn in 2019 and Dean Ambrose's heel turn in 2018 was a complete disaster. Fans had no desire to see Ambrose as a babyface and the nature of the storyline that he had with Seth Rollins was rather tasteless even by WWE standards. To make amends, WWE would turn Ambrose back to a babyface on the road to WrestleMania 35 and to do this, Ambrose would confront Rollins in the ring and he would inform Rollins to slay the beast. This was a reference to Rollins' upcoming match against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 35. However, this line was completely unscripted. According to Dave Meltzer, WWE planned something else entirely but Ambrose wasn't feeling it so he simply decided to do his own thing. This was around the time that Ambrose was getting set to leave the WWE so he felt invincible and he certainly wasn't going to say something that he didn't feel was a right fit for his character. And number 1. Roman Reigns tells the fans to shut up 
A Roman Reigns during his babyface run was often met with a negative response from fans. It was rather common for Reigns to simply ignore the negative response as he was a top babyface in the WWE and WWE simply didn't want to draw attention to the negativity. However, there was one occasion in 2016 when Reigns just had enough of the crowd being against him and he would fire back at the crowd with a completely unscripted line in his promo. This took place during a promo segment Reigns was having with WWE Champion Dean Ambrose. As during the segment, the crowd began to chant, You can't wrestle at Reigns. This was when Reigns decided to go off script and state, For all the dudes chanting that I can't wrestle, calm down, relax, take a sip of your beer, and shut your mouth. To Reigns' credit, it worked as the crowd toned it down quite dramatically following his outburst, and Reigns and Ambrose were able to continue the promo without being heckled by the fans in attendance. But there you have it folks, 10 of the best times WWE superstars went off script. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.